Plus 131 dispensation, seasons, and times. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is expanding our understanding of history from a biblical point of view. You see, human beings tend to believe in historians when a man supposes certain things, proposes a thesis, and before you know it, people are accept in the academic world and the society. But here, the Lord is taking us through the Holy Bible to show us what happened in the past, what is happening in the now, and what will happen in the future, which is why dispensation seasons and times is such an important cause to study. Father in heaven, the great I am who I am, we rely entirely on your spirit to breathe life upon your word and grant us understanding. Just have your way and do that which you determine to do in Yeshua's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if there is time, we're going to do two things today, two in one. The first is evidence of Africa's relevance in Elohim's work in the earth to him. And by Africa, we include Africa, America, the Caribbean basin, the West Indies. We include South America. We include Europe and the Middle East and Asia that are of hermetic blood. Brothers and sisters, the beginning of the matter is not all that matters. The end of the matter is the, what ultimately stands. And so the evidence, if there's no time, we just look at the evidence. And in the in letter, the next lesson, we look at the redemptive purpose of Elohim for this house that has been so marginalized, suffered so much in the earth dream till today. But brothers and sisters, live, wisdom liberates. Wisdom gives understanding. So let's look at the evidence of Africa's relevance in Elohim's work in the air tree. We've looked at this in different ways, but we now put them together into one holistic lesson. Number one, the promise of restitution of all things. We mentioned it before. I want to now contextualize it with this. That one of the things that gives us confidence about what the Lord will do is the scripture says it clearly. Peter speaking, you know what? And it, after healing of the man at Gate Beautiful, he began to prophesy. You see, Peter prophesied. Many people don't know that. But Peter's prophecy has stood the test of time. One of the prophecies gave that is being fulfilled in our time is Acts 3, 20, 21. He shall send Yeshua. After telling people to repent and be baptized, he told him in verse 20 that he shall send Yeshua we before you was preached unto you whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which Elohim has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So since the world began, Elohim has been speaking that there will be a time of restitution of all things. All things that went wrong will be made right. It is in the divine plan. Elohim is a God of restoration. And from a practical point of view, this restoration, there's an aspect that has to do with the Lord visiting the house of Ham, the one who had suffered the effect of what Noah placed upon him. It wasn't Elohim that placed that curse on Ham and his offspring and Canaan. You know, what? it wasn't that at all. It was man's ordinance. A time will come when Elohim will visit the people and take away the effect of that. And that is what has happened. It's just that people are ignorant. That's why they keep accepting. The remnant has been liberated, and the Lord will bring that liberation to the realm of the general. Number two, they promise that there is hope for the rejected and neglected, with even possibility of our running those who had a good head start. You know, there are powerful scriptures that often are overlooked, but we want to contextualize it in this course. One of them we said in the other days, Matthew 1930. But many there are that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. He was speaking to the Jews. Yeshua was speaking to the Jews. And in Matthew 20 again, 19, he said, So the last shall be the first, and the first the last. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Lord was telling the Jews, You are first now. You've been given the first oracles of Elohim. Hey, if you are not careful, and Paul emphasized it, you will end up being lost. So the Jews are on their lap of the gospel. Then they rejected the Messiah. The battle moved to the house of Japheth. Japheth ran it. And it enlarged the gospel. Bet corrupted the gospel. Turned it to Christian religion. And Elohim 
seeing no other thing to do, he went to the house of the rejected and the neglected the house of Ham to call out for himself a people who were no people and to bring them into his gospel program and show them the revelation of the kingdom. And so the last is the first in the plan of Elohim. Number three, this is where it gets real, real cool. As they say, you know, the young people of this generation say it is cool. Number three, I'm going to now articulate it in 12 points. So that is the biblical and historic evidence that Africa and the family of Ham have been part of Elohim's program in the air trim right from the beginning of time. See, one of the familiar tricks of colonialism is to subdue the mind of conquered people and reprogram the same to believe lies and have truths about themselves. You see, this is called neocolonialism. You know, I mean, let me say this to you. 25 years ago, I probably wouldn't have worn this dress to preach on camera. Neocolonialism. I only needed to wear a suit with a tie before I feel that I can preach. Neocolonialism manifests in many ways. And one of the ways is that Africans believe the lie told to them by, you know, the, the, the missionaries from Europe that they are from a dark continent, a jungle full of uh, uh, monkeys uh, jumping and all that. So it reprogrammed them to believe all negatives about the continent, the dark continent. Who told you? The dark continent? Listen to this. The gospel got to Africa before it got to Europe. Do you know that? Listen. The gospel got to Africa hundreds of years before it got to Europe. That's the truth. First sisters, but neocolonialism can program a people to believe the worst about themselves. History is often written by the conqueror. The victorious person writes history the way he likes. And so, brothers and sisters, the cold facts of biblical and secular history reveal a different picture about Africa. Let's outline them now. Twelve points we're going to outline. 3.1. Abraham found shelter and food in Egypt when famine ravaged the land of Canaan. You see, people read Genesis 12. They stop in verse 1 to 3 about the call of Abraham from the all of the Chaldeans and say, and the promise that he'll bless him and whoever blesses him is blessed, whoever causes him is cursed. People rarely go further. And that is one dangerous thing about cherry-picking scriptures. If you read down to verse 10, we are told, and there was a famine in the land. And what happened? Of all places in the world, Abraham went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Of all places in the world, he could have gone north, he could have gone east, he could have gone west. It was down to Africa, the land of Ham, that the Lord sent Abraham to preserve him. Now, 3.2, when there was famine in the land of Canaan again, during the time of his son Isaac, hey, he went down to Gera. He went down to Abimelech, the king of the Philistines in Gera, which is the Hamitic people. If you, you know, look at Genesis 26, 1 to 6, you see that Gera, you know, where he went to. If you look at the table of nations in Genesis 10, you see that Gera was in the land of Ham. Number 3.3, the entire house of Israel. And remember, Israel was the father. I mean, Jacob was the father of Israel. And they were carriers of the seed of the woman. Abraham was a carrier to Isaac, then to Jacob. When he will have died of famine in the promised land, where did the Lord take him to? Not, not, not east, not west, but down south to Africa. And that's where he went to Egypt. Joseph, his son, was preserved in Egypt, where he grew up, from slavery to palace. Men and brethren, 3.4, Moses, the instrument through whom the Torah was given, he was born in Africa. He grew up in Africa. Hey, where did he receive the Torah? The Torah that is, was the law of the Old Testament, the Torah that the Ten Commandments in the Torah is the basis of all, all laws of all people in the world. Every nation is based on the Ten Commandments. Where did he receive it? It was in Mount Sinai. Where is Mount Sinai? In the Sinai Peninsula of Africa. Brothers and sisters, 3.5. When the Jews were going in the wilderness, one of the people that gave them help was Jethro, an African. Hey, the father-in-law of Moses, 
He was eyes for Israel. He was a spy master who would see where there was danger, say, don't go here. And then he guided and with others. Look at Numbers 10, 29 to 32. It was also this man, Jethro, who gave Moses the strategic plan of leadership, how to lead these people who were going with him, this even number, number, he told Moses, don't micromanage, farm out the work, and let there be people to deal with all the categories of people. Exodus 18, 1 to 27, till today, in business schools across the world, Exodus 18, 1 to 27, the principles that Jethro gave to Moses are still being studied till today. And Africa, 3.6, when Yeshua was born, you know, it was to Egypt that El Eb Egypt, Africa, that Elohim shattered his life when Herod sought to kill him. You know, Matthew 2, 13 to 15. What happened there? Yeshua told him. He said, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee into Egypt, and there thou shalt be until I bring thee word. For Herod shall seek the young child to destroy him. When he then he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. It was prophesied years before it happened, brothers and sisters. It can't get better than this. We better get it right. We better understand the Lord has a program to use Africa, which was being manifested in the things that were done. And if we don't finish this lesson, we take the second part of it, which is remix of the lesson, in the next one, so that we can get this right. Brothers and sisters, we just want to tell you this is important that look, Africa, Elohim had planned to use Africa all along. It's just that it's been shielded. 3.7 A son of Ham, Simon the Canaanite, was one of the 12 apostles who walked with Yeshua in Matthew 10, 4, Mark 3, 18. It was Simon the Canaanite. He was him who walked with Yeshua. Yes, the others were Jews. This was what? Then, 3.8, when Yeshua was on the way to Golgotha, forsaken by his disciples, it was an African, Simon of Cyrene, that helped him to carry the cross, the most critical part of his redemptive mission for which he was incarnated. When it was time to go to the cross, Peter ran away. John was to take care of his mom. The other disciples out of the way. What happened? Matthew 27, 32. As they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. So Simon of Cyrene. Cyrene is in modern day Libya. 3.9 people from Africa were present on the day of Pentecost when Holy Spirit empowered and activated the church. People tend to forget this. Right the day the church was born, Jews from Africa. And any proselytes that were with them, proselytes are natives of lands who converted to Judaism. And then they came to Jerusalem for the feast. And there, the day of Pentecost happened, and they, they had the disciples. Jerusalem was in uproar. Let's read the account, Acts 2, from verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a, mind, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like us of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as, holy, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now listen carefully. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. In those days, it was North Africa and the Mediterranean basin. That's what they knew then. Now, when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together, were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Not the Jewish language, the language of the various peoples. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? Are they not Galileans? How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we are born? Persians, people of Persia, and Medes in that area of Iran, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, Babylon area, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, in Egypt. 
They came from Africa and in the past of Libya, about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. So people from Africa were there on the day Holy Spirit came and the church began and Peter preached and 3,000 souls were added to the Lord. People from Africa were there, part of that experience. 3.10, the Ethiopian eunuch was supernaturally saved and became a missionary to his own country. People tend to forget these things. The, 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 the Ethiopian eunuch came from Ethiopia and Philip, the, the deacon of the early church who became an evangelist, ministered to him and you know what? Ministration to him, he was saved and he went gladly to go to Africa to take the same gospel, to preach the same gospel to his people. And we're talking about Acts 8, 26 to 40. So he went back to Ethiopia, the land of Kosh, the firstborn of, Af of, the, of Ham, and who from where a lot of the people spread to different parts of Africa. 3.11, the gospel and the early church spread across North Africa in the early days of the gospel. That's the truth. Listen, there were flourishing Christian communities along the Mediterranean coast on both sides, both the European side and the African side. They were there, all over, all through. Brothers and sisters, it is so important we get these things because there's been so much lie. And neocolonialism had made people to accept the lies. They look at their situation and they are not able to see beyond their present situation. And it's breeding so much frustration in many African-American, many uh, uh, West Indies communities, many African communities and others because of this frustration. Nobody has told them the history. You come from a people that have a history with the Lord. You come from a people that have value with the Lord. All the land is the one written by victors. Who consign them so that they can become permanent serfs in the plan of man? Men and brethren, 3.12, listen to this. There were many church fathers of, the, of African descent in the early church, as a matter of fact. After the apostles, the 12 apostles, after their time, which ended with John, the 12, because Paul died before John. John, the aged. You know what? He lived longest. After them, the next set of leaders you see from the second century, most of them, who played key roles in preserving the gospel were Africans. It include people like Tertullian of Carthage, Tunisia. Carthage is in Tunisia between 160 to 225 AD. Tertullian was a powerful theologian of his time from 160 that's the second century origin of Egypt between 185 to 254 AD what about Athanasius of Alexandria <laughs> one of the most outstanding theologians of his time from 296 to 373 AD what of Augustine of Hippo powerful writer Augustine of Hippo impacted the church in his age in the, you know 354 to 430 AD. Men and brethren, initial understanding of the triune nature of Elohim, the triune nature, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you know, of the same substance, most of the original understanding were from theologians from Africa who propounded what the Bible stated clearly. Before the Council of Nicaea, in 353 AD, by uh, somewhere by Constantia. Before that time, the people who carried that truth and propounded it were Africans. So what are we saying, men and brethren, before the uh, Aryan controversy in Alexandria in the 4th century, you know, and that's why it was Africans who stood strong to stand with the gospel. Men and brethren, listen to this. We don't want to fit in the next lesson. It's so critical. You understand it. If you understand this one and understand lesson 10, you got the heart of this thing that, look, the Lord has a plan for all branches of the human family. Don't believe the lie. Don't believe the lie that it's been told by people who, you know, wrote history. And they wrote selectively. And they wrote it to favor certain races and put others down. No, the Lord has a plan. He created all the races. And let me say this, brothers and sisters, 
The glorious thing at the end of the day is simple. Wow. The Lord reminded me this morning. You know what it is? The Lord used the house of Shem to bring the oracles of Elohim. Preserve it all the way from Moses and all the prophets. They were Shemites, house of Shem. The very person they spoke about, the Messiah that will come. Moses said, hey, anyone who does not receive it will be cut off. When he came, he didn't come packaged like a, a warrior from heaven on a steed. He came like a babe in a manger. The people look at babe in the manger and say, no, this cannot be Elohim. They couldn't receive the mystery of the incarnation. So the house of Shem rejected the one who all the prophets were speaking about. Isaiah spoke about him. Jeremiah spoke about the new covenant that will come in him. Jeremiah 31, all that was spoken, even Malachi, the last of the Old Testament, said, hey, you know he will come suddenly. The messenger of the covenant spoke about John the Baptist, spoke about Yeshua. When he came, he was rejected. The early church was Semitic. The gospel, three out of four, were by people from the house of Shem, the Jews. As we said, 12 disciples, only one, Simon the Canaanite, was non-Jewish. They carried everything. They, they were, the early church was Jewish. It was from Jewish colonies that they began to impact the land. And in the fullness of time, when the rejection of Yeshua was complete, the Lord said, okay, you know what? Stay there, stay here. In unbelief, let me make room for the Gentiles. And the program of God, Acts 28, 28, moved to the house of Japheth. And Paul, that was one of the reasons why he went to Rome. He deliberately chose to go to Rome. And from there, even in the palace, people in the palace had the gospel. And from there, the gospel was spread. Peter got to Rome. Eventually, Rome beheaded Peter, crucified Peter. Uh, beheaded uh, Paul, crucified, you know, uh, Peter upside down. Rome tried to stamp out the gospel, but then, and then Rome changed, tried to change the gospel from gospel of the kingdom to religion and exported it worldwide. It became about buildings, about robes, about uh, clerics, about, you know, uh, uh, a clergy. It became about, you know, the glory of men. It became about men as lords of the manor in the house of Elohim. It became about cathedrals, and it became about emperors coming to church. It became about religion, organization, and Elohim. After he saw what happened, and then the Big Bang Theory, and then the evolution, Japheth, essentially, the knowledge of Elohim taken away from the people, and the Lord said, I'm going to take a people who are not a people. I'm, they are my people. I'm going to go to Africa. They rejected and they neglected. I'm going to bring them into the program so that I'll use the one that had no name to finish up this thing so that the one new man can emerge from the work that will be given to the gospel out of Africa. Brothers and sisters, the glorious plan of Elohim is amazing, is extraordinary. The wonderful plan of Elohim. Tell it to any one of the seed of Ham who feels belittled, who feels that history has not been fair? No, that's not the end of a matter. The beginning is not the end. The end is greater than beginning. Tell them there is plan. Is there in the scripture? If only people will be open, if only people will study the scriptures with an open heart, you're going to see the glorious plan of Elohim hidden. That in these last days, the Lord's plan is to bring them forth. But let me say this to you. Don't think every one from Africa is going to get it right. No, some are going to insist on holding to what was formulated in Europe religion. The anointing will be there. The power will be there, but it will be corrupted by the systems they subscribe to. So it's not everybody that comes out of Africa that you just embrace. No, check them. Check them. What do they look like? Do they, do, they, do they take the truth of the simplicity of the gospel? If not, put a question mark. Check them. Do they carry mystery Babylon? If yes, put a question mark. Because the remnant will know the truth that sets free. The remnant will also recognize the other remnant. They also know those who are pretenders to what the Lord is doing in the now. Brothers and sisters, stand firm. Stand strong. Listen. 
Nobody is in any way disadvantaged for what the Lord wants to do with his children out of Africa, Africa, America, out of the Caribbean, West Indies, out of uh, Middle East and Asia. Nobody should feel threatened. It is the program of Elohim. The end is not that. The end is the emergence of the one new man. And we're going to talk about that in the next lesson. We want to bless the Lord for you and thank the Lord that you are receiving this systematically. And please share the videos. Please discuss it. Raise it in your group. Start conversations. Start discussions. Let people get to know the truth so they can align up with Elohim's purpose for this generation. Let us pray. Father in heaven, the great I am, who I am, we bless you for we know you are good. Your mercies endure forever. Lord, we ask you to be glorified in all that we are discussing. Let it just be your counsel by your spirit, expositing your truth so that we can receive it and we'll be delivered from all errors and all limitations. Father, there is no one besides you. Have your way and let your name be glorified. In Yeshua, Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching. And we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook, Monday, all the way to Sunday, every day about 10 30 a.m uk time and that's the same at nigerian time and you it's either apostle george monday to friday uh, to thursday pastor grace uh, friday to sunday and then in the evening of sunday we have two sessions from 5 30 to about six after six another one up to seven so please join us on the live stream and you're gonna enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks. This course you just listened to, all these lessons, you know, there's an ebook we have free of charge. Everything we do is free. But more importantly, you can actually do your program on, you know, ebooks. You can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdombooksclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at akclife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of Yeshua, Jesus, is empowered with truth. Remember, it is the teach, train, equip, activate, and release paradigm. Absolutely free of charge. Have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon.